Hello, I'm Brooks Rayford, CEO of the North Carolina Technology Association, or NC Tech, and welcome to this edition of NC Tech Chats, where I have brief conversations with interesting people doing interesting things. NC Tech is a statewide organization with over 650 member companies, organizations, and institutions, and our member companies collectively employ over 200,000 North Carolinians. I'm happy to have as my guest today, Brad Wood, who is COO of McGough Construction, a family-owned firm based in Minnesota that has recently opened its first East Coast office here in the Triangle. Brad, thanks for being with us to help us understand some of the factors that drew McGough to the North Carolina region. Well, happy to be here. Well, first of all, tell us a bit about the company. It's probably not a brand name very familiar to our market at the moment. I'm sure that will change shortly, but a bit about its founding history, current footprint, and your client profile. So uh, we're a family-owned business. You mentioned that. Uh, the McGough family has been in the construction business dating back to the late 1800s in Ireland. Uh, they emigrated to the United States in the uh, early 1900s, and in the 1920s, two McGough brothers, they represented a third generation McGoughs, uh, formed a company called McGough Brothers here in the Midwest. And then in 1956, that company split along family lines and one of the brothers, Peter, and his six sons formed uh, what is now McGough Construction Company, Inc. We're based out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, until the early 2000s, we had one office. It was lo located in uh, a suburb of St. Paul. We uh, did a lot of a uh, high uh, high end corporate facilities for uh, very uh, notable companies: American Express, 3M, uh, Medtronics, uh, Ecolab, companies like that. General Mills. We did a lot of corporate campus work. Um, but starting in the early 2000s, my brother in law, uh, who uh, represented the fifth generation, began to work on a transition plan with the company. And one of his goals was to geographically expand and to also expand from a sector point of view. So uh, we began to do a lot more healthcare work, uh, med technology work, data center work, um, and, and really went after a lot of what I would call complex construction type uh, uh, facilities. And, and we were very successful in winning that work. We had a great reputation for high quality. Uh, the company has never been in litigation in the history of the firm. We're a billion dollar company today. That's kind of unheard of in a pretty litigious industry, but it has a lot to do with the types of clients we work with, the delivery systems that are important to us, good partnering practices, how we treat our trade partners. So we've expanded now geographically. We have um, 10 offices outside of the Twin Cities. We have two offices in the state of South Dakota, two offices in the state of North Dakota. We have an office in Iowa. We have an office in Texas, down in Dallas. And uh, we have three perimeter offices, uh, our outstate offices in, in Minnesota. And of course, uh, we launched um, about a year ago, we had one of our senior executives move to the Triangle area. We're very interested in it. And uh, we've, we've formally opened up our office. We're remodeling a space as we speak and getting prepared, hopefully, to win some work in 2024. That's great. You mentioned you've not been involved in lawsuits. I remember someone in the construction industry told me once that the a project is over when the judge's gavel bangs. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's <laughs> so true. I mean, um, we were meeting with a potential joint venture partner. I will not name the name. And we mentioned that we had another construction firm, a national firm. And we mentioned we had never been in litigation. And they said, wow, we're in 10 litig we're in 10 lawsuits right now. And it's like, Wow. I mean, we we can't even fathom what that would be like. We're, we've been blessed. We've uh, just had a lot of really good people that have focused on. It doesn't mean we don't have problems and we don't have issues. It's just how we choose to solve those problems rather than, uh, you know, litigate. We try to, in a partnering fashion, solve them. So, yep, it's pretty unique history and we're pretty proud of it. Well, rightly so. I hope that uh, continues. So, um, yeah. I want to shift a bit to uh, your decision to open an office here, not just because it's Raleigh area or North Carolina, but because it's really your first foray into this region of the country or this half of the country. So North Carolina and the Triangle area in particular show up on a lot of lists for top rankings in various ways. Uh, what were some of the compelling factors behind McGough's decision to uh, move into this market? 
Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So what we've done is really taken a look at the entire country. We've been on uh, um, a national expansion kind of path, as I said, since the early 2000s, but very concentrated, first of all, regionally in the Midwest. Um, and, and then we, we moved down into the Texas market with an, an intention to open multiple offices in the Texas market. But we began to look at, the, uh, frankly, the, the Southeast and the Mid-Atlantic area uh, about two years ago. Um, we were really looking at markets that have sustained growth potential. And that's a big deal to us. And typically, they're states that are business friendly. Um, North Carolina doesn't have the lowest taxes, but it has a very business friendly environment. Um, when you talk to people, we did investigation of talking to people that are in the market, uh, design and, and trade partners that, that we have relationships with. And they all kind of said the same thing. This is a place where they make it easy to do business. There's a lot of capital infusion into the market. And so to us, that's, that's the undergirdings that you need for sustained growth. You've had great growth. And right now, all the projections suggest it's going to outgrow other portions of the country in terms of construction volume. Yeah. So that was one thing. But, but growth alone is not enough. It, uh, for us, it's very important to the type of work that's getting done in the market. I mentioned that we've, we've moved into more sophisticated science and technology. We've been, done a lot of that work. Uh, biopharma. Uh, we've done manufacturing facilities, research facilities. Uh, data centers, med technology manufacturing. We're doing two fairly sizable chip um, uh, manufacturing facilities. Um, those were the kind of markets where we saw longer term sustained growth, um, especially with things like the CHIPS Act and the, the federal government really working uh, with private industry to try to promote movement of chip manufacturing to the United States. When we looked at the East Coast, we looked at that, that uh, you can see in this, the triangle area in particular is kind of ground zero for where a lot of that work is being done. And so we see it as a really good starting point. The three universities there make it, I guess the third thing we always look for is workforce, professional and trade, um, and in particular professional. Uh, can you draw it and, and attract the right professionals to, to manage an operation? And we feel very good about that. You, you guys have an amazing uh, set of universities in the Triangle area. And, and also when you look at the other amenities of living in North Carolina, especially compared to the Midwest, um, we felt it would be easy to attract uh, and retain and, and potentially move some of our, uh, um, our own staff into that area because there was a fair amount of interest in that. Um, the other thing I would say that um, we've, we've studied is the trade partners. And that's a big deal to McGough. A general contractor, you work with a lot of trade partners, subcontractors, they're often called, we refer to them as trade partners. They, they make or break projects and the level of sophistication and the reputations they have, is there, is there a good set of trade partners? And our investigation really has, has suggested there is um, just outstanding. We have, we're very blessed with good uh, trade partners in the Midwest. Uh, in the in the Texas area that we work with, and and we felt like we're gonna we're gonna find the same thing here. So those were the main the main reasons North Carolina made sense for us. Um, I could speak to why we we are hoping to be successful because that's there's a I guess the the other thing that's important to us is can we be successful? Can we come into a market that has good competition, even if it's growing? There's still very good competition, and if so, can we find our niche? And for McGough, the way we've been able to do that in all the markets, the new markets, is we, um, being a family-owned business, um, we're very um, uh, am proud of our partnering practices and the way we do business and the types of people that work for us, the integrity of those people. And we always feel like there's a space and we believe there's a space in this market for a company that has sophistication, that has the right experience, but also, frankly, we call it the sweet spot but it also has those family values and, and can differentiate itself in just the way it operates. So that's our hope. Um, and we'll see if we can be successful or not. Well, you answered the next question I'm gonna ask you, which is what does, so in, an, in an environment where there's a lot of work to be had and a lot of good companies here already, 
uh, who are involved, you know, what what makes McGough stand out uh, or distinguishes it. So you've you've uh, done a good job in answering that. So I'll move on. Uh, this yeah. is um, this is a, a tech friendly state, uh, certainly a tech heavy uh, region that you've now uh, opened up an office in. The Tech Association uh, reflects the fact that every company is either uh, tech or tech enabled. Um, it's pervasive. So who doesn't use tech, right? And so our membership of nearly 700 member companies uh, really runs the gamut of type of industry, type of, of organization. So talk about from the construction industry side of things, um, what are some of the trends and how technology is being used in the construction industry in ways that perhaps non-construction people might be surprised to hear? Yeah, yeah, the technology, you know, the, the construction industry, frankly, has been behind in terms of productivity enhancements almost all other industries it it um and and i won't go into all the reasons why but what i what what is true is you're seeing an acceleration of the use of technologies in ways we haven't um we're beginning to see the use of uh, robotics for demolition um we have uh, our own uh, uh fun little uh tools that we use or these robotics that will go in and they'll help in um in doing actual demolition where it's a very unsafe part of construction and you can remove humans from certain situations. You're seeing virtual modeling is, of course, becoming very, very significant. We, we build the entire building virtually before you, you put a shovel in the ground. And, and that's incredibly important. It allows you to, to identify clash detection for all the systems that go into the building. It allows you to actually those that are designing and, and potential end users to, to really get a sense before you start building, is this the space we're looking for? Um, it allows for a lot of coordination of the trades. Um, mm -hmm. and, and there's a lot of level of sophistication of that that's happening that just keeps advancing and getting better and better. Um, drones, um, we're seeing drones being used uh, initially as flyovers of, of some of our big industrial sites and others. So we can, um, others who aren't physically on site can see get eyes on the project continuously. When you fly the drones every day, you can see the progress being made. You're now starting to see more of that technology inside the buildings to be able to, to uh, take cameras and videos of what's happening. And so you can begin to say, are we making the progress? Are we on schedule? Um, uh, are, are, we, are we at the pace we need to be at? Um, those are just some of the examples. The systems you use for um, uh, the collaboration tools are getting better. Um, one of the things we're excited about that is when you have concentrations of expertise, let's say in the Midwest, which we do, and you're doing work elsewhere, um, you, can, you can leverage those resources much better. If you have mechanical, electrical uh, expertise, we do. We have an MEP group. Um, we have uh, sustainability teams, uh, safety teams. Um, you can leverage a lot of that expertise in a way that you couldn't before because you can see a lot of what's happening without physically being on site. And that's becoming important for these mega projects where you're trying to bring literally thousands of people to work on a project and professional staffs that are hundreds of people. Um, it's hard always to put them in trailers on a construction site and to make that work. But all of a sudden the world has expanded just like you and I right now uh, feel like we're maybe in the same room and it's really helping, I think, advance the ability to use expertise from outside of uh, any region. And we expect that that'll be one of the advantages we can bring is the leveraging of a lot of expertise that isn't physically in the market. Right, well, you kind of hit on this earlier in your answer. It, uh, technology certainly helps advance the old notion of um, measure twice, cut once, so. Right, exactly, <laughs> you, you're right on. <laughs> Now, I imagine that AI will play an increasingly large role. There's a lot of data in when you're building a, a, a large project that you're tracking and drawings and what whatnot. And, and I can just imagine all the ways in which AI might help find things that might be missed or uh, make even recommendations that wouldn't have been thought of. So that's a whole new frontier we're, we're in for. Yeah, and, and you know, we're, we're using it already in our legal area where we review contracts and right. you know there's just a lot of detail well these ai applications will go through they'll highlight the kinds of things we're looking for and um you know who would have thought that 
you'd be using artificial intelligence on the contract side, but uh, that's an area we're already, and you're right. Um, we're exploring other AI tools that are evolving um, for the actual construction sites and projects themselves. Well, Brent, we've got just a couple of minutes left, so I always end with some version of this question, and that is, tell us about you. What is your background, and how did it, uh, how did um, your journey unfold to this point in your career? So I'll go back to 1974. I was a ninth grader, and I started dating a girl named Colleen McGough. And little did I know how impactful that would be in my life. We ended up getting married, but. During high school, I was working in the warehouse of McGough Construction with my brother-in-law, Tom, building pallets with uh, scrap lumber that came off of construction sites for trucking companies in the area. And then during college, I went to the University of Minnesota, got two degrees from there, uh, both in one in finance, and then I got my MBA. But while I was in college, I was a brick tender working construction to help pay for that. When I, when I finished college, I made a big decision. It wasn't, didn't make my wife real happy, but I did not want to go into the construction firm at that point and work for her father and her uncles. I just said, I, I want to do my own thing. So I actually went off into the high tech world. I worked at NCR Corporation in their networking division in St. Paul. They were acquired by AT&T while I was there. Um, so I was working at one time for one of the highest, the largest companies in the world, and I realized how much I didn't like working for large corporations. There, there was not, there was just a lot of things I didn't enjoy about that. So I moved into a smaller high-tech startup for a period of time. And from there ended in a consulting firm called Zebulon in Minneapolis in the mid nineties where we did high-tech consulting. And at that time, my brother-in-law, Tom was starting to talk and think about transition of the company. And he and I sat down and spent a fair amount of time. I tried to help him organize that. And then ultimately he invited me to join the company and I joined him in 1998. So I've been with the firm for uh, 25 plus years and part of this journey of change and transition, which has been incredibly fun. I have uh, five beautiful daughters. I have 16 grandchildren and um, they keep us busy and that's why I have to keep working. <laughs> I don't have a choice. <laughs> that's, a heck, that's a heck of a Christmas list right there. <laughs> oh, oh, we're already working on that. Literally already working on that. So. Well, that's great, Brad. Thank you for sharing that, that personal background. And thank you for taking time to join me. Uh, we're glad to have McGough establishing a presence in North Carolina. And for our viewers, you can find previous editions of NC Tech Chats and other programming on our YouTube channel, which can be found at our website, which is nctech.org. Thanks for joining us.